stories across the globe to stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. A very good evening to you. I'm Sharif Atahir. Good evening. I'm Lakshit Adri Singh and let's take a look at the headlines for tonight. Travel restrictions have been extended till 4 a.m. on the 14th of this month. The vaccination program in 12 more districts will commence on the 8th of this month. The president requests relevant groups to maintain essential services without destabilizing public life. Provision of the 5,000 rupee allowance begins. The Navy says an oil leakage has not been reported from the burnt ship. Approval has been granted for the emergency use of the China-made Sinovac vaccine. We move on to those and other stories in detail now. A look at local news first. Head of the National Operational Center for the Prevention of the COVID-19 Outbreak, Army Commander General Shravendra Silva said that the current island-wide travel restrictions have been extended till 4 a.m. on the 14th of this month. He further says that the vaccination program will be conducted in several more districts with effect from the 8th of this month. Army Commander General Shravendra Silva said that the government has decided to extend the ongoing travel restrictions till the 14th of this month. According to the instructions of the President, the first dose of the Sinopharm vaccine imported from China will be inoculated on residents in the districts of Matale, Nuarelia, Trincomalee, Kergol, Hambantata, Badulla, Anuradhapura, Puttalam, Ampara, Batikla, Monaragala and Pulannaru districts with effect from the 8th of this month. The Grama Seva divisions, which show a higher tendency on the spread of the COVID-19 disease, will be given prominence in the vaccination program. It has also been pointed out that priority will be given to vaccinate those above the age of 60 years, pregnant women and government servants. President Gotabe Rajapaksa says that governors and district secretaries should personally intervene to maintain essential services without destabilizing public life. He further points out that factories and development projects should be maintained continuously without allowing a collapse in the economy of the country. The country must move forward, overcoming challenges. The president made these remarks addressing provincial governors and district secretaries at a meeting held at the president's office today. The president has also pointed out the importance of carrying forward functions in a factory or in a project without an abrupt closure when an infected person was found in such a factory in a development project. The functioning of such places should be carried out according to health recommendations. The meeting has also discussed in depth on the challenges and problems confronted by the people in the face of travel restrictions. The president has pointed out that shortcomings have been reported in the implementation of the programs of the regional level despite government instructions to maintain essential services and factories according to health guidelines. President Gotabi Rajapaksa said that at the time of the closure, it was clearly stated that certain groups should come into action. All activities pertaining to agriculture should get underway. The factories should also function. In the absence of such a situation, Sri Lanka would face a grave situation. The government took prompt measures to purchase vegetable and fruit harvest from the people. In the event of the breakdown of the purchasing mechanism, the farmers will be severely affected. It has also been reiterated on this occasion that the targets of projects being implemented through local funds and foreign aid should be duly fulfilled. The President has pointed out the importance of continuously maintaining the programs implemented by the government, including the 1,000 reservoirs, development of 100,000 kilometers of roadways, 1,000 national schools, housing, regional hospitals, drinking water and renewable energy. The President has also stated that the vaccination program is being carried out according to a scientific plan and added that he expects the governors as well as prominent state officials and the political authority would continue to extend the necessary assistance to the health divisions to implement the program without causing hardships to the general public. He added that the government has decided to provide organic fertilizer to the farmers and requested the relevant groups to extend assistance in this regard. It has been planned to provide aid and credit facilities to minor entrepreneurs and farmer societies engaged in the manufacturing of organic fertilizer. The governors on this occasion have extended their appreciation on the commitment of the government headed by the president to make successful the government's future program and to safeguard public life amidst the challenges arisen as a result of the pandemic. 
The district secretaries have stated that the gazetting of the ports, the customs, the railway, the banks and the fuel services as essential services has been a source of great relief for them to engage in their services. In the meantime, Navy Media spokesman Captain Indika De Silva says that an oil leakage has not been reported from the Express Pearl ship. The government says if an oil leakage occurs, necessary measures will be taken to minimize the damage. A salvaging company was reported to have arrived at 9 o'clock this morning to the location where the Express Pearl ship is located and attempted to bring it to the deep seas. However, the efforts were thwarted due to the rear portion of the ship hitting the bottom of the sea. Navy Media spokesman Captain Indica De Silva said that the ship is presently positioned more towards the sea. The attention of the Navy as well as other relevant institutions has been directed on the possibility of an occurrence of an oil leakage. However, such a development has not yet been observed. Yet the Department of Coastal Conservation have dispatched equipment used in an oil leak closer to the location where the ship is positioned. <laughs> Minister of Ports and Shipping Rohita Abe Gunavardhana and Higher Management of the Ports Authority have inspected the state of the Express Pearl ship from a tug craft of the Ports Authority today. The Marine Environmental Protection Authority says that if an oil leak takes place, it will be controlled through the assistance of the Indian naval craft as well. Cleaning of the polluted beach is being carried out expeditiously on the instructions of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha. The Ministry of Urban Development and Housing, through joint collaboration of the Marine Environmental Protection Authority, the Department of Coastal Conservation, the Sri Lanka Navy and the Sri Lanka Air Force. 584 tons of plastic were removed from the coastal area from Uswetikayava to Sarakukanda. The plastic refuse is to be packed in safety bags and stored in containers. Minister of Environment Mahinda Amaravi said at a media briefing today the punishments should be imposed on all those who are responsible for the accident of the express pearl vessel provision of the 5000 rupee allowance to low income earners and people without an income affected by the corona pandemic has commenced today the government has set aside 30 billion rupees in this connection there are 487,000 families in the Kalamba district who are eligible to receive the assistance. They include some of the beneficiaries, senior citizens and persons with disabilities. The people who have been deprived of their livelihood are also qualified to receive the concession. Handing over of the 5,000 rupees allowance to the residences of the Samurdi recipients in the Wataraka Grama Seva Division in the Homagami Divisional Secretariat Division has taken place today. The 5,000 rupees allowance has also been provided to the residences in Obesekarapura Rajagiriya at the Chandra de Silva grounds. The Samurdi recipients in the Batapota Grama Niladari Division in Bhattaramulla have also received the 5,000 rupees allowance today. A door-to-door -door campaign to provide the 5,000 rupees allowance to the residents in the Laksanda Sevana housing scheme in Kolonava has also taken place today. Around 75,000 Samurthi families in the Badulla district have also received their 5,000 rupees allowance at their doorsteps today. Measures have also been taken to distribute the 5,000 rupees allowance to the people in the Samurthi zone in Mirahavatta in Valimada today. Distribution of the 5,000 rupees allowance to the people in the Vaunya district has commenced this morning. Such payments have been symbolically made at the Madhukanda Sri Dalada Viharastane. The program has also got underway at the Polonaru district today. Accordingly, 1,121 families in 12 Gramaniladari divisions were scheduled to receive payments from the Samurdi banks in Jayantipura. Presentation of the 5,000 rupees allowance to 4.16 million low-income and Samurdi families in the Kurunagala district has also begun today. Accordingly, a sum of 2.8 billion rupees is to be used or rather distributed among the people in 30 divisional secretariat divisions. Kurunagala additional district secretary G. A. Kitsiri has presided over the event to hand over the payment to people in the Mallavapitiya area. Low-income earners and people without a livelihood in the Kalutara district have also begun to receive the 5,000 rupees allowance today. Accordingly, 7,622 Samurthi beneficiaries in the Panadura Divisional Secretariat have become eligible to receive the payment. Distribution of the 5,000 rupee allowance in the Gaul district has begun in the China Kurutua Samurthi Division today.
State Minister Professor Channa Jayasumana says that Sri Lanka is scheduled to receive a further consignment of 2 million Sinopharm vaccines in the next 10 days. He made these remarks at a media briefing at the Department of Government Information today to educate the relevant groups on the importation and distribution of COVID vaccines. State Minister Professor Channa Jasumana says that so far they have received 1.1 million doses of Sinopharm vaccines. He added that the government has entered into an agreement to receive 13 million doses of Sinopharm vaccines. Sri Lankan ambassador in Beijing, Palita Kohana, has negotiated the purchase of vaccines after payments. He added that China has informed on the possibility of releasing the initial consignment of vaccines by the 6th of this month. They have also informed on the possibility of a second consignment on the 9th of this month. Accordingly, Sri Lanka is to receive a total of 2 million doses of Sinopharm vaccines within the next six days. The state minister further said that they have also entered into an agreement to receive 14 million doses of the Russian Sputnik vaccines. Similarly, an agreement has been reached with the Pfizer Institute of the U.S. to purchase vaccines. Pfizer has informed that 5 million doses of the Pfizer vaccines will be provided to Sri Lanka within this year. The initial stock comprising of around 400,000 doses is scheduled to be delivered in July. State Minister Professor Channa Jayasumana added that they have also conducted talks with China to receive the other main Chinese vaccine named Sinovac. An agreement of understanding has also been reached with China regarding the manufacturing of Sinovac vaccine in Sri Lanka. Preliminary measures have also been taken in this regard. He also said that the State Pharmaceutical Corporation has engaged in talks with the U.S. vaccine manufacturer Johnson & Johnson for the procurement of the vaccine. He said that it is hoped to receive this vaccine within several weeks from now. The World Health Organization has approved the Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use, the second Chinese vaccine to receive the WHO's green light. The UN Health Agency signed off on CoronaVac, a two-dose vaccine developed by the Beijing-based firm, which is already being deployed in several countries around the world. The World Health Organization approved the emergency use of Sinovac's COVID-19 vaccine on Tuesday. It's the second Chinese vaccine to be given the green light by the WHO after Sinopharm last month. The emergency listing is a signal to national regulators of a product's safety and efficacy. Results showed that Sinovac prevented symptomatic disease in more than half of those vaccinated and prevented severe COVID-19 in 100% of the study population. WHO Director Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus welcomed the vaccine's approval. The easy storage requirements of CoronaVac make it very suitable for low resource settings. It's now the eighth vaccine to receive EUL by WHO. It's now crucial to get these life-saving tools to the people that need them quickly. The emergency listing allows for the vaccine to now be included in COVAX. That's a global program providing vaccines mainly to poor countries struggling with vaccine supplies. The WHO's endorsement is also a major boost for Sinovac after earlier data in clinical trials showed a wide range of efficacy rates. As of the end of May, Sinovac said it had already supplied more than 600 million doses of its vaccine at home and abroad. Many of the doses have gone to countries in Africa, Latin America and Asia. And now taking a look at the COVID-19 situation right here in Sri Lanka. The COVID immunization vaccination program was successfully conducted in nine districts today as well. 76,346 persons have been inoculated. The second dose of the Covishield vaccine was given to 1,272 persons yesterday. 57,706 persons have received the first dose of the Sinopharm vaccine yesterday. The number of those who have received the first dose of the Sputnik V vaccine yesterday was 17,368. So far, 2,115,218 persons have received the COVID-19 vaccines. Out of this number, 925,242 have received the first dose of the Covishield vaccine. The second dose of this vaccine has been delivered to 348,582 persons so far. The first dose of the Sinopharm vaccine has been delivered to 97,205 persons and the first dose of the Sputnik V vaccine to 48,189 persons. 2,568 COVID-19 patients were detected in the country today. Meanwhile, 1,504 patients left the hospitals today following recovery. 
Meanwhile, island-wide programs are being conducted to enlighten pregnant women on how to protect themselves from the affliction of the COVID-19 disease. It has also been reported that 52 persons, including two staff workers at the Mulgampala home for the aged in Kandy, were afflicted with the COVID-19 disease. 15 persons who stayed at a rest hall at the location were also identified as COVID-19 patients. The Director General of Health Services have confirmed yesterday that a further 43 COVID-related deaths have occurred between the 20th of last month and yesterday. Accordingly, the total number of COVID-related deaths recorded in the country has increased to 1,527. The Bandarnayaka Ayurvedic Research Hospital in Navinna Maharagama has been reserved as an immediate or rather intermediate COVID treatment centre. Minister Pavitra Varnyarachi and State Minister Sisira Jayakodi were engaged in an observation tour in the hospital today. A factory to locally produce oxygen needed for COVID patients is being constructed in Keravalapitiya. A relevant agreement in this regard was signed today. Chairman of the Land Development Corporation, Major General MRW Soiza, and Chairman of the Litro Gas Company, Anil Koswatha, have signed the agreement. The police say the 1,038 persons who have violated quarantine laws in the 24 hours that ended at 6 a.m. today were arrested. The police have also taken measures to paste stickers valid only for one day on all vehicles upon inspection. Police media spokesman DIG Ajit Rohan has said that special roadblocks are being implemented at entry points to the city of Colombo. He further said that stickers valid only for the will will be pasted on vehicles on these locations after inspections. The police spokesman added that this would enable the motorists to arrive in the city without delay. The sticker pasting program has been introduced in order to prevent the intrusion of non-essential motor vehicles into the city of Colombo. Senior DIG in charge of Western Province, Desha Bandhu Tenmakod, has inspected the roadblock near the DIG's office of Paliogada today. The new program was seen being implemented at several entry points to Colombo since this morning. The Hanwala police station has taken measures to turn back all non-essential motor vehicles which had attempted to enter the Colombo city on the high-level and low-level roads since this morning. It has also been reported that the vehicle in which beautician Chandimal Jasing has left the coats after receiving bail was engaged in a traffic violation. Chandimal Jasinghe and model Piyumihan Samali have been arrested recently on the charges of conducting a birthday party in a five-star hotel in Colombo breaching quarantine laws. The driver and the motor vehicle were taken into police custody by the Kesselwatha police station over the breaching of traffic laws. The accused was later on produced before the half store of coats. He was ordered to pat a fine of 12,500 rupees. Thirteen other persons who had attended a party were also arrested yesterday and today. All the suspects were produced before the Colombo Additional Magistrate Courts today. The, Colum uh, the court has decided to release on bail each suspect on a surety bail of 100,000 rupees. The case is scheduled to be reconvened on the 27th of August. Our correspondent says the 13 suspects were taken in a police bus were quarantined after the placing of deposits. Meanwhile, the multi-purpose cooperative societies have commenced a program to distribute essential items to the residences in the western province, taking into consideration of the difficulties being experienced by the people as a result of travel restrictions. Considering the difficulties faced by the borrowers of licensed banks due to the third wave of COVID-19 pandemic, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has requested licensed commercial banks and licensed specialized banks to provide concessions to affected borrowers. Concessions are granted for performing credit facilities with respect to credit facilities that are in the performing category as at 15th May 2021 to defer recovery of capital, interest or both on a case-by-case -case basis during the period up to 31st August 2021, considering the financial difficulties such as loss of job, loss or reduction of income, salaries or sales, closure of businesses, etc. of the eligible borrowers. Alternatively, licensed banks may restructure the existing credit facilities over a longer period, considering the repayment capacity of the borrower and an acceptable revival plan submitted by such borrowers. Concessions granted for non-performing credit facilities reschedule the credit facilities in the non-performing category as at 15th May 2021, considering the repayment capacity of the borrower and an acceptable revival plan. All recovery actions are required to be suspended until 31st August 2021 against credit facilities that are classified as non-performing on or after the 1st of April 2020. 
other concessions are extension of validity, validity period of cheques valued less than 500,000 rupees up to 30th June 2021, extension of the due dates of short-term revolving facilities during the period up to 31st August 2021, discontinuation of charging for cheque returns and late payments for credit cards during the period up to 30th June 2021 for those who are demonstrably affected, not to decline loan applications from eligible borrowers under the scheme solely based on an adverse crib record, considering any request from affected borrowers to delay the loan payments by a few days under a maximum limit of 10 days due to the ongoing travel restrictions without charging any additional interest or other charges for such delay. The eligible borrowers who wish to apply for the concessionary scheme are required to make a request to the respective licensed bank on or before the 21st June 2021 in writing or through electronic means. Licensed banks are requested to accept any request sub submitted after 21st June 2021. If the reasons for delay in making such request is acceptable, eligible borrowers who have the capacity to repay loans are expected to continue the repayments instead of requesting for deferment or restructuring of credit facilities further. Eligible borrowers may contact the respective licensed banks to obtain more information. Relevant circular number 5 of 2021 issued to licensed banks on 25th May 2021 is published in the CBSL website www.cbsl.gov.lk. And in sports news, a stock of equipment needed for the promotion of the sport of gymnastics was presented at the Bodybuilding Centre in Torrington, Colombo yesterday. The Japan Gymnastics Association has handed over the equipment in response to a request made by Minister Nama Rajapaksa. The Japanese ambassador in Sri Lanka, Akira Sugiyama, has presided, presented the items to Minister Nama Rajapaksa. The Japanese coaches have been engaged in training local sportsmen and women since the year 2006. And that's all the stories for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow at the very same time. Until then, stay safe and good night. Good night.